So I think we still have a couple minutes. I see lots of familiar names. Yes, thank you for coming back and chatting. Yeah, glad to see you. Or if we don't see you, we're glad you're here. Yeah, here, yeah. <laughs> In spirit, we like that. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yep, so I think Rod's been giving a few people some advice about sound. So thank you, Rod. We want to extend our appreciation to him. He's always kind of like our safety net sitting back there. <laughs> I get to learn lots of stuff too. <laughs> we love having you here, Rod. Well, it's a fair deal. I like being here too. <laughs> Good. And are we able to save the chat today? We talked about that on Monday, eh? We should save it. And... Right. Yeah, anyone in the meeting can save the chat. Okay. Um, all you have to do is hit the three little dots at the bottom corner of the chat and you have yep. the option to save it. And yep. It should save in a folder on your computer called Zoom. Oh, okay. And do you, can you start that at the beginning and it'll save everything after that or do you do it at the end? Uh, I generally grab it at the end is what, what, what you can okay. do. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, thanks, Ron. You always had these little nuggets of information for us. It's great. <laughs> I didn't know that. We were always depending on you and being like, Rod, can you send us the chat archives? We want to answer the questions when meanwhile we could have been doing it by ourselves. Sorry. Again, we appreciate you. Yeah. <laughs> And it's okay to be cared for. Let's just accept that. <laughs> That's right. Mm. I'm recognizing some names too. So um, today we're going to be talking about some provocation videos. And so I'm sure people are already doing that. So like, if you feel comfortable about sharing, it's a good close group now. <laughs> we take a risk, join us in the conversation. For sure. If there's ever anything that you want to add, please jump in. We will not be offended in any way. We love to hear people other than ourselves talking. Yeah. We hear ourselves a lot lately. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I know lots of people on the flip side of that like to just to be quiet and think about it. This is my time just to, you know, to do some learning on my own, get a few ideas and I just want to receive. So that is totally okay too. I appreciate that. Sure. So it is uh, top of the hour, so we should get going. There we go. So I'm going to run the slides today, but uh, we'll start with our traditional territory acknowledgement. Um, so first of all, just looking at this image, um, some of us that live in the Lambton side of the county, uh, our district, might recognize this flowing body of water. It's the St. Clair River, and the green land in the middle there is Anjanon First Nation. And then on the either sides there are some industry that um, support our local community. But we can see how the river meanders down and extends to Walpole Island and then through onto St. Clair, um, St. Clair Lake and the Chatham area. So we have a beautiful area to explore and appreciate and honor. So we acknowledge that the land in which we are gathered is part of the traditional territory of the Chippewa, Udawa, Potawatomi and Delaware nations. These indigenous nations, known as the Nishbek and the Lape, agreed through their ancestral languages to the mutual sharing of the land with obligations and responsibilities to the environment. Today, these responsibilities and obligations extend to all peoples. If anyone has a picture, I love that picture. Of it's so some neat. land down I yeah. know, yeah, and thinking about the Kent County, I don't have many pictures. Oops. Uh, Sally shared this picture with us, um, and I think she just got it off Google, but like it is a lot of thought provoking um, pieces here. And she, I'm just mm -hmm. going to share a little story that she shared with us is that um, her grandfather is from um, the First Nation here, and he remembers um, that the, at one time the river wasn't freezing, so she's not really sure, but she wonders if the river has been dredged so it allows for the bigger ships to go through. But she remembers like he, him telling stories about crossing over between Canada and the United States and being able to do that easily compared to um, like the water system that we have now, which is you know fast water, deep. So very interesting to see how our land has changed over time. I wonder what this would, place would have looked like 100 years ago. 
or a thousand years ago, what it would look like. Absolutely. So welcome everyone. So I've been chatting a lot already today. Um, my name is Pam Gallant and I'm a member of the elementary program team and I'm gonna focus on the assessment and evaluation piece uh, within the team, but uh, great to be joining with my other comrades today. Yeah, and I am Alicia Shank. I am one of the instructional coaches for the board. Again, so glad to be here with you. Um, we appreciate you taking the time spending spending an hour or so with us on uh, Wednesday to break up your week. And as always, we have our two little panel members Damn. who are <laughs> graciously joining us. We have Karen. Karen, I don't know, do you want to introduce yourself? Um, sure. Hi, I'm Karen, uh, Karen Lockhart, registered ECE at London Road. And we also have our dear friend Heather joining us here. Hello, hello, Heather Dramnitsky from AA Wright. Mm -hmm. And Heather and you know, Karen you know, Heather, are both going to kind of the other day I was like, Heather, I'm not even sure if I know how to say that. I'm not even sure if I know how to say your last name. So thank you for saying it. I'm just like, yeah, Heather, all the time. Yeah, my, uh, my students call me Mrs. D. I would never force them to try to say Mrs. Dramnitsky. Uh, they'll work up to it. That's yes. it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So again, don't forget, if you have any questions or anything, make sure you can put them in the chat or you can unmute um, and you know, share your ideas or thoughts with us, questions. They are your gals today to answer. Exactly. So we thought we would start with uh, just some wonderings and questions. Hopefully you have some people share with us. And we've been like thinking a lot about the curriculum and uh, the four frames a lot um, the last few sessions. And but we thought like we should maybe cycle back to our beginnings when we started this learning from home, distance, remote learning. Um, we did extra learning about Seesaw and kindergarten teachers definitely have embraced this early on and you know, it was nice to continue this learning time knowing that we have a platform that we're comfortable with and what we're always learning more about. Um, but we wanted to cycle back and is there anything that um, would be good for the cause to hear? So any Seesaw stories, wonderings you have, like the good, the bad, the ugly. <laughs> So if you have a, something to share, you can pop on mic or you can pop it into the chat. Lay it on us. We want everything. We want to know everything that's good, <laughs> great, and ugly. So some, uh, Rosa asked, I'm wondering if we can have our seesaw activities private so responses from other families cannot see responses. Are you using the at home codes or are you still using like the family app part of it? Because there may, maybe there's a difference there. I'm mm -hmm. still using the, uh, or I'm sorry, I'm using at home, but I'm wondering if some family members are still using the um, the family one. Maybe yeah. That's the problem. Yeah. yeah. So I, I'm kind of in that situation. So we, we didn't switch over to the at home learning codes, but we had a few kids who the parents did do that because they have siblings who are, um, using those in other classes. So they just sort of naturally switched over. Um, so it's kind of been funny because now I've got, um, a couple of kids in my class who I taught in years past but it looks like they're back in my class again because their moms and dads just kind of added it all in together. I have no idea exactly how they did that. Um, but so I've kind of got a hybrid between the two, it almost seems like. Um, so as far as like, if you want to post something just to like, if you post it and then you want to only those people to only be able to see their answers, is that kind of what you're wondering about? Yes, because I have some families who are feeling overwhelmed with everyone else's responses right. and they're feeling like they're not doing enough. So I want to ease their mind and I'm, I've tried a couple of settings and it doesn't seem to be working. So I'm just wondering. I wonder, I wonder Rosa, if you um, were to post like 
only tag that child in a post rather than everybody else. Um, I and had then, done that and yeah. I thought I thought I just tagged the one child and then another child responded to that activity and I'm yeah. not sure. So why. I think in your can you see the class settings piece here? Yeah. On the screen. Okay. So yep. I'm in I went through through the wrench. So this is my play around kindergarten class, right? So right now it's in the class code sharing devices. So that's what it would have been if we were in the classroom and that's how a student logs in like through that family piece. Yep. You can change that for the class to the email Google. So then every family has an email attachment and then that reduces that um, visibility of other students actions. So, cause this one's really, everybody can see what's going on. Right. And so there's that or the home code piece. So there's some great videos on the Seesaw help piece that if you go in there and just at your own time to like list, watch those or read through them and Seesaw help to say like um, home learning codes or email students using emails, that might help you define what's best for your students. Perfect. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks for that question. I was wondering too. Um, so I, I have a son who his teacher is using Seesaw and she, mm -hmm. I can only see his activities and I didn't realize, I didn't even think about that. That didn't cross my mind. Um, so I know Laurel is saying that sh they don't send them out as activities. Laurel, does that make a difference? Um, we do them as, uh we save them as activities, then we take them out of activities and just send them to the families under the private messaging. Oh, that's an interesting workaround. <laughs> yeah, so and we both are under my name. And so the parents know that it's both of us in the private messaging, but it was our way around of not changing to the other program or like the newer one. Because the they weren't clothes, aware, they yeah. don't know anything about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I can see, like, we had to, basically, we're doing triage, right? Like, so we went into this, thinking in September, how we set it up, we'll be much more knowledgeable about that, parents probably more comfortable. So thank you for sharing that workaround. Um, I have one, like, the ugly moment for me was what happens when Seesaw crashes, is not working, and, like, it, knock on wood, it is a quite the reliable program, but they, a couple of times that things weren't posting and they, and uh, you know, I get emails from teachers and say like, this isn't working. I actually started following Seesaw on Twitter and they are really great about keeping people informed of like, um, there's an issue with Seesaw and you know, we, we're working on it. So it's nice to know like, it's not me that's broken. It's like the system that's broken. So it kind of eases my mind. Like I'm not going back in there and trying to get things to muscle things to make them work. Um, it's more like, okay, Seesaw is going to fix that. And I've got an hour or two to wait and then I'll go back in on it. So following them on Twitter has been an, a stress reliever for me. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty amazing how quickly they're responding. And responding to people's requests and trying to get you know solutions put together really quick. Yes, That's good. Yeah, absolutely. And I noticed and the LKD is uh, there. there. <laughs> Sorry, Pam. I was just saying the LKDSB network of teachers supporting teachers is amazing too. It's incredible. I feel like every time I go back on to like look for things and just like see what people are doing to keep mm -hmm. myself familiar with it, I, it grows every time and I think it's amazing. Mm -hmm. And you know, Josie, I agree with you. I think it's been great and that sharing piece is huge because it allows us to, you know, take a bit of a breather and, and why reinvent the wheel when there's so much good out there already. Mm -hmm. so that's awesome. So I know last week someone shared uh, with me about like when you look at the all the learning experience issues that we're doing and teachers are trying to get things accessible for families so the students can engage in the learning and um, that addition of when you're creating something, the caption, that little symbol of the caption 
and adding an extra link in there to the drawing page like that was really interesting and then using that voiceover piece so all of those solid tools in seesaw are really um, extended upon by using that caption in the voiceover um, i do want to acknowledge you know kindergarten group we 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 believe in sharing is caring <laughs> And uh, so we're actually going to thank our primary group, the Office Hour. So they meet on Tuesday. And so again, their focus content is about the primary grade learning. But um, they created this video. And we thought we might take it, share it with you right now, because it's only about less than two minutes. Um, and they have the tip about how to schedule the inactivity. So if we think about someone mentioned the overloading families or overloading ourselves, like this may be helpful. and. Um, managing that hopefully the sound is good scheduling an activity in the seesaw library is a great way to stay organized and get ahead of tasks it's quite simple to do once you select an activity from the library click on the green assign button select which class and which students you'd like to assign the activity to then in the bottom left corner click schedule from here you're able to select either assign immediately or assign on a specific date and time which you can set to whatever works for you once you've assigned it you can go into the activities tab click on the schedule button and see any activities you have assigned on other dates notice it'll say the assigned on date so that you can see when they are going to be sent out to students. You can assign multiple activities on multiple dates at multiple times. By using the assign activity function, it's a great way to control the amount of activities that are going out and line them up with your lessons or weekly plans. The primary office hours are a great way to hear what others are doing during this time of remote learning. Many great ideas have been shared and explored. We hope you can join us for future. We're going to keep you with us. <laughs> there we go. One thing I like about that, um, Pam, I'm just kind of thinking, and again, selfishly, from my own kind of perspective, I know that in my house there are some days that are much quieter than other days. Uh, today, for example, was a bit of a busy day with meetings between myself mm -hmm. um, and also my older son had a number talk on Google Meet today. So it's nice to be able to do on those that you do have a little bit of breathing room, be able mm -hmm. to kind of create some activities and front load them and assign them for a day. And then you don't really have to think about it. So it is nice to kind of give yourself that chance that when you have the time, then you can do it. And then there, the pressure is a little a little bit less on the days that maybe you don't feel as available. Mm -hmm. I totally agree. Because I was thinking like my Wednesday, Thursdays are, are big days <laughs> for me, you know, as far as the commitments go. So it's nice to know that you can do something and, and give it attention, but not have to really worry about monitoring it in the moment. Okay. So and Diana, just Go ahead. said there too that um, it's nice to be able to see what her teaching partner's posting in advance so then she can piggyback off of that activity. That's great. Like that's, that's a really nice way to be able to, you know, make sure that you're mm -hmm. kind of staying in line and maybe you haven't had a chance to real time. So. Absolutely. And like curriculum partners too, if they have something that like an activity they're creating, they might have things that they're sharing with you. And with that advent of like sh saving them to the district or school library, then you can talk about the scheduling and saying this will fit really nicely with that. So thank you to the primary team. Yeah, so Alicia, we were talking a lot about provocations. It seems like a, we were reflecting back uh, about the power of provocations in kindergarten, right? Yeah, I think we've done a lot of uh, discussing it. And talk about how we want to maintain that integrity of the program and we know ourselves in our own classrooms that sometimes if we put out a provocation it can kind of guide where we go for you know short periods of time or longer periods of time and I think that we've done 
a really good job as a, as a district to try to maintain that. And provocations mm -hmm. are something that our kids enjoy and it does cause, uh, you know, a bit more engagement for our kids as well. Absolutely. And like that word provocation was not a word I knew a lot about. Um, being mostly a junior teacher, but like now I understand the power of it for any learner to like just to get them to thinking outside the box or to extend their ideas or you know realize there's not just a one way of answering the question. It's a great way of stance on learning to do with that. But it's like the decisions educators make to get kids thinking about those important learning lessons. And if we think back, like we had some great contributions from, you know, Jen and Heather as a team and Karen, your, your, your ideas, those provocation pieces. And last week we talked about the power of books for all of that, um, to share that. So it really got us thinking about like, we're, how do we keep leveraging that idea of um, provocation? Like, where do we go next with this? And we have someone that we work with um, a lot. His name is Sean Lenny, and he helps us, you know, think about um, sharing messages. And he's got us thinking a lot about videos lately. And so, you know, we have access to that video in Seesaw and our cell phones have videos and all that kind of piece. And we see lots of evidence of teachers using videos. We wondered if this might be a, a great opportunity to refine our skills about videos in that land of provocation. And I think too, we've heard kind of loud and clear from you guys that um, when the students see your faces or when they hear mm -hmm. your voices, that families are enjoying that and the kids are enjoying it. So we just wanted to kind of take that a step further and, and see if we can bump up that engagement piece a little bit, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we thought, well, let's mash the two ideas together. So we've done some reading and some research and question and wondering and playing around, <laughs> whatever you want to call it, <laughs> to learn more about provocation video. So we thought we would share those beginning thoughts we have and pose some questions or problems we had to encounter, overcome, and just share some ideas about the provocation video with the idea of like, we're already Educators are always ready doing that in the kindergarten program. So how can we refine it? So one, it's reaching our learners. Two, it's supporting families. And three, it's helping making sure that, you know, we, uh, we're doing the best to engage all that, those parties involved there. Maybe make it a little easier on ourselves too. So first of all, we'll define a provocation video is a video that poses a problem or open-ended idea that piques the curiosity of the viewer. So I think Karen, I'm just thinking back to your your stick video. <laughs> you posed a problem, didn't you? Yes, I did. Yes. What can you What can you make with a straight line? And there's the answer is endless. <laughs> yeah, and the curiosity was like I was curious to find out what all those pieces were. So you've had a few more days to collect um, some student in pieces. So we saw anything new come being creative there that made you go like, oh, that's funny. <laughs> Not really. Most of them mm -hmm. had kind of the same ideas, but um, I'm I my favorite has to be the hopscotch one though. Yeah. <laughs> Just how he put every like he put it like so many different. Um, sections into it and the counting and but yeah that was awesome. no <laughs> great stuff so alicia was uh, quite active in trying to figure out what this is so if we think about the idea of uh, a provocation video one of its jobs is to pose a problem so we've got a series of examples that we're going to share and if you have questions or wondering please pop them into the chat Heather and Karen are going to share those with us today, if there's something there. But we're gonna share um, a provocation video. Oops, I gotta figure out how to click this better. Today I was looking at my markers and I found a green marker. And when I walked outside, I saw the beautiful green grass. I opened my fridge and I found grapes. And I even found a Nerf gun on the floor. 
we used a glue stick today to make a musical instrument. Can you guess which sound I was searching for today? Ooh. It's a problem pose. So Alicia, can you share us any thoughts about your video making? <laughs> oh boy. So um, I had to channel my inner FDK educator, which has been hidden away in the corner for a little while, but I love this stuff. And I kind of, when I was making the vacation video, I was thinking it is so easy to come up with a construction video or a build this or a what you do with these. And I know that we're really great at kind of sending out those ideas. So I wanted to find a way to kind of peak that same, maybe interest and curiosity, focusing me a little bit more on the literacy piece or the numeracy piece. So when I first did this, and I know we're gonna get into it more, it was way bigger than just this little snippet that I made. And as I said, we'll kind of talk about that more, but I just, I wanted to kind of give kids a chance to sit on this for a little bit, to talk to their parents about it, and then to respond back, whether it was just a little note in the chat that said like, you're talking about the letter G, or um, you know, maybe they sent back a, a picture of something that started with G. So we just kind of to spark that curiosity and to get the conversation going. Yeah, and well, one thing I noticed, it's short. Mm -hmm. Like it was like when you when I think about pose a problem, I was thinking, oh, here we go. We're going to have big, long explanation, but it's pretty short. Yeah. And I think too the whole idea of provocation, I remember thinking back in the classroom that if I wanted to put out a provocation, I would just put thing out on the table and then I would just leave it. So that mm -hmm. whole thought provoking process, if we were in the classroom, that's what we would do. So what did it look like when you are going um, into this remote setting? And although mm -hmm. I did pose a bit of a prompt there at the end, it still kind of leaves them go like what what is happening or why is what's the purpose of this interesting okay so we get another example which one of my favorite uh, tools to, to enjoy when I visit a FTK <laughs> classroom so I'm like probably people are going oh oh how'd you get upset for home <laughs> I bought them for my children <laughs> many a moons ago for Christmas and they still use them they're like the best magnet tiles are magic in my they, world yeah, fantastic. Um, so one of the other things that we were learning that a provocation video can also, other than posing the problem, can create that sense of wonder to go along with it. Well, you, you went in a place I wasn't expecting to go. <laughs> the suspense was killing you, wasn't it? Yeah. Didn't know what was going to happen at the end. I know, Pam. I know. <laughs> exactly. So if we think about those provocation videos, like the purpose really is then to pose a problem or create that sense of wonder that we can build upon. So Heather and or Karen, is there anything in the chat there that we might um, want Yes. Yeah, well, there's just a question, maybe uh, more of a technical question about um, posting a video um, that was made on the computer, try to upload it, takes forever and never goes. Um, a video that was about eight minutes long. I know in my experience, I've done some, I've tried to do it on my computer and upload it to Seesaw and I wasn't successful. So I did it on my iPad and I just did it in the, in the camera 
app and then uploaded it to Seesaw and it didn't matter how long it was, like it could be over the five minutes and it seemed to work mm -hmm. better. So I don't know if it's a, a laptop thing or like a personal computer thing that it's not working well. I don't know, I just, I had luck on my iPad, so. Mm -hmm. So yeah, uploading challenges, um, that's a real thing. <laughs> it works sure. well on, oh sorry, it works well on your phone too. Like I always have problems on my computer or my laptop, so I'll just upload it to my phone or on Seesaw, it works well. Yeah, I've, I've done that too. Yeah. yeah, so talking about those paths for uploading is a great thing. So, you know, like we use Google Drive a lot for our team and videos take a long time. Like they, you upload them and sometimes it takes a couple of times to do it. Or once they, they're in there, they still have to render or spin around. So it's patience um, with that. Um, but you know, interesting. If we go back to provocation videos, and for all age learners, from what we're seeing, provocation videos, like in the design, are meant to be less than ninety seconds. So I think that's something, Alicia, you discovered. Um, we'll talk about a little couple more slides, but um, like keeping it simple is something that we're learning to do. So thank you, yeah. acknowledging the prep challenge with um, uploading. Yeah. Um, and Diane, I noticed that you asked if I made this right in Seesaw. This one I actually, because I am comfortable in Seesaw and making videos, I wanted to kind of challenge myself a bit. So this one I actually made in Shadow Puppet. And I was pleasantly surprised because the catchy little music at the back, I didn't know um, was an option. So this is from Shadow Puppet. Mm -hmm. And um, the first one, it looked like clips, was it? Yeah. First mm -hmm. one I did use Apple Clips for. Maybe just, we will address some tools to use, but Clips is the one that our team uses a lot. And if you have an Apple phone or an iPad, it is a free app to get. It works tremendously well on your phone. So if you have a late, like if your iPad's old, you may not have the greatest success of there, but it works amazingly well on your phone for all the bells and whistles. Okay, so posing problems create a sense of wonder. And then another piece of what makes a provocation provocation video is like the ending is open and it requires them or the students to do something in response. And we have uh, someone graciously offered to share their video that they engage with their students. So maybe at the end, if they are here, maybe they'll talk about it. <laughs> we'll share this one. Numbers, numbers everywhere. I went for a little walk today, and I noticed numbers everywhere. I noticed numbers on a address sign, a license plate. I noticed numbers on my meter, and another meter on my house. Numbers on a store sign and numbers on a speed limit sign. Even my lock on my door. When you go for a walk, can you find numbers? What numbers did you find? Don't forget to take some pictures and share them with me. So do we have Erica with us today? Yeah, I'm here. Hi Erica, how are you? Hi. Thanks for sharing. No problem. Was Adobe Spark your uh, medium of choice always, or is that a new adventure for you? Uh, I've just been playing around with it because I'm not very technically inclined, so I found it very, very easy to use um, and easy to load onto Seesaw. Awesome. So why was it like this number walk? Was that something that was familiar to your kids? Like, why did you choose this as a, a task? Um, well, for two reasons. I did the numbers because I wanted to have some of the curriculum in there. Mm -hmm. But I've been hearing from my parents that the students were all going stir crazy and, and just they needed to get out. So I wanted them to go outside, see what was in their own environment, and uh, just have a notice that there's numbers. They can find <laughs> numbers anywhere, basically. Yeah. But, like, I didn't even have to leave my house. Those were all right around my house. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So new tool for you. Well done. Yeah, yeah thanks. <laughs> but you know, like grounding yourself in the curriculum, like that's a great 
spot to like spark the idea. And then the openness at the end. And I think we have another slide from you. So we got some responses so. back. <laughs> yes, yeah, I did. Yeah. This student so. was, um, she was starting to fizzle off on our video chat. She was really kind of getting in that slump of being at home. And then I shared the numbers video and her dad uh, messaged me and, and he said, like, thanks a lot. We were up at like six in the morning because we had to get outside and do the numbers walk. <laughs> So it just sparked that interest in that uh, that desire to learn again. Awesome, and I know Karen was sharing that too. That that, that little nudge to like send me the picture back or the video back mm -hmm. um, really you know shows that there's a little extra nudge to like keep connected. So absolutely, I yeah. I bet you must have been really happy to hear from her after. Uh, it definitely, yes. Mm -hmm. I love that she checked out the sewer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this one over here. Exactly. Awesome. I think well, thank you so much for sharing. No do you have any questions for Erica or uh, anything in the chat that's popped up? Erica, I think it's funny that sometimes it takes like the funniest things to kind of bring that spark back. Like, I'm sure when you created this, you probably didn't think like, oh, this is going to bring everybody love back but it just goes to show that some kids need different opportunity just to kind of get back into the swing oh definitely I like I was even racking my brain how can I bring some of these kids back in and it was just getting them outside it was amazing and having that option to send me a picture of what they learned or what they saw yeah for sure thank you so much for sharing no problem Okay, and then so as we continue to learn more about the um, provocation video, one of the pieces was about that emo emotional investment, like you wanted to do. So Erica just talked about that, like nature was an, em an emotional investment piece to that. And like my teacher asked me to do this. So there's that emotional investment. So how did they go about doing that? It's like that combination of text and images and animation and sound. So um Alicia has made an, another sample here, so playing around. So we'll play this one. And we'll just encourage you to think about how she used text and animation and sound um, to create that emotional investment. Sorry, right, going back. Today I woke up feeling a little down. I looked outside and the sun wasn't shining. The birds were chirping but it seemed a bit dreary. I got out some loose parts and decided to create a picture. Oops, sorry guys, clicking away. Do that again. <laughs> Today I woke up feeling a little down. I looked outside and the sun wasn't shining. The birds were chirping, but it seemed a bit dreary. I got out some loose parts and decided to create a picture some dandelions to make the sun. It got some beads to resemble some green grass. I added a picnic table and some clouds, even some flowers and butterflies. Here's my beautiful spring pitcher. I can't wait until we have warmer weather, but for today, I'll just enjoy what I've created. How are you feeling today? I'd love to see you create something using loose parts from around your home. Oh, Alicia, you were making this. You did something fancy in there, all speedy in the middle. What was that? <laughs> I don't know. I was my, it was actually my son who is sometimes blows me away. So he just decided to, to make the video um, go in like that time lapse. Mm -hmm. When you change it to time lapse, it just kind of sped it up. So background behind this story is we have um, a colleague of ours on the program team who actually has a daughter in kindergarten and she had watched our session um, and wondered about this whole loose parts piece and she was curious about like the why behind it and what what loose parts were and what she did with them so I actually created this video for her daughter it was like a spur of the moment last minute kind of thing uh, just to kind of introduce the idea to her and that's what I ended up with and it was terrible outside and I felt like <laughs> Blah. If I feel this way, how are the poor kids feeling? Absolutely. I think that was the day it was like, it's gonna 
rainy and then it snowed and it was just mm -hmm. not, it was not ideal. And if anybody needs any yellow dandelion pieces to create some art, come on over to my front lawn. Just saying. <laughs> Get lots of it. <laughs> so we actually do have a little video clip in response to um, this provocation. So, whoop, my goodness, I so switch over to my mask. So when we have students respond to us, we might have these little micro videos of them responding. So she's pretty, I, not sure if we'll be able to hear her very well. We'll see. I think you provoked something there. <laughs> she was really excited about the grass. She mentioned it multiple times. So, <laughs> yeah. And I saw some one to one correspondence there happening with the uh, one, two, three, four. Absolutely. So, again, like talking about building that connection is having those little vi micro videos come back to us um, to explain how the provocation sparked their interest. So we have another one too. Another element of the provocation video is about creating a connection. Um, so it could be that emotional connection, but like the connection of like, what is the problem and why is this important for us to, uh, to look at? So this is another contribution from one of our kindergarten educators. Um, Josie is right. I wonder if she's here yeah. today. She might if she's ready to speak after we watch the video, but so what do you think the geese will do next? Let's talk about it. Look at the spring picture. What do you see? Did you know that baby geese are called goslings? Where do you think the geese are in this picture? How many goslings do you see? Where are the geese going with their mother? Is there a problem? What do you think the geese will do next? Let's talk about it. Answer the questions and tell us a story. So sweet, and I love how it ends there with just some responses you got back from this provocation. So hi Josie, how are you? I'm good, thanks. <laughs> Thank you for joining us today. So was this a new adventure for you to make a video provocation or is it something that you had already been doing in your classroom? Family member and the student. So uh, I, I thought I would use it. I just experimented in clips uh, to kind of use the photo to create some questions around it. Um, I, I think it was a way um, for them to have a springboard to kind of uh, create a story of their own. And, and they actually asked a lot of questions afterwards because from the questions they thought I had the answers, but I wanted them to actually tell me a story. So we were able to see that there were lots of responses and a lot of different stories that can come from one picture. You remember those books, Let's Talk About It, with all those giant photos that we used to always uh, have a conversation with in our classroom? I love those, and I think mm -hmm. that's what we think about it. So, Right, so something familiar sparked just using a different medium and trying to reach out. So it's so great. And I love, like, you had that sketch drawing piece. Um, like, you know, tell me a story about a, a canned goose and their goslings. Like a flat activity you might not have gotten the responses of like asking you questions, right? So I think that's a lovely way of showing a connection and and getting kids to talk about it. I like to hear Josie that um, it prompts because we in the classroom we know what to say to the kids. We know how to kind of use those effective questions to really get them talking, but this might have been nice for the parents as well to be like, oh, the, here's a prompt I can use to actually have this conversation. Um, because again, when 
you take off that educator hat, parents don't necessarily find it as easy. So that's a, a nice additive, I think. I would appreciate that as a parent. Hmm. Anything from our chat we can acknowledge there or wonder about? No, I think we're good. We just had a couple people mention um, the Adobe Spark app instead of Clips, or if you're on a Android device rather than an iPhone or iPad. Absolutely. So that's the one Erica made it with Adobe Spark, and Alicia made one with uh, I want to say I want to say Sock Puppet, but it's called Shadow, Shadow Puppet. Puppet. <laughs> I want to say Sock Puppet, <laughs> and then Clips is a favorite. So again, it's what. Uh, Thanks for you. So we're just going to summarize just a little bit like the things we've looked at. So what we understand about provocation videos, what we're learning about is that they generally are designed to be under 90 seconds. So I think, oh, that lightens the load right there, right? You know, sometimes um, will this save tension or, you know, do I have enough content or I'm, I'm four minutes in and I make a mistake. <laughs> I don't want to redo. So I, I'm comforted by that 90 seconds. So if we think about provocation videos, um, reflecting on our, what we create, do we have a problem or an open-ended idea that piques the curiosity? And then do we have that uh, kind of cliffhanger? Like, what are they going to do? We want to have them action, have some kind of action with this. And then these tools that we have available, it makes it so easy to add the text and the image and the animation for that. And the sound, like Clips has embedded sound, but you said you found some... Um, sound clips in Shadow Puppet that you didn't know were there, Alicia? So um, in Shadow Puppet, it was just the music that you can put in the background. Music. And then mm -hmm. you could also, in those, um, add your voice as well, along with the music. Mm -hmm. So that was nice. I don't remember it being an option. I'm sure it probably was, but I'm just learning yeah. more as I go. And I know the text piece, like in clips, you can do like a lot of the voice to text piece. Like there's actually like you talk into it and it gives the text right on the screen. So nice time saver there. And then like making sure we're sharing, you know, what the problem is and why it's important. So even like that hint at like we need a problem to tell our inner story or, you know, we can construct things. Uh, we just had a question in the chat about would you be sending out other activities or videos in the same day or would this be it? be for the day? That is an excellent question. So we, um, I think Alicia and I were talking about this last night when we were talking about it. Um, so we talked about like the video about engaging the audience. So like, is this, you know your students, I would say. So in that short little time frame, um, you know, give them something to act on and to construct and come back. Like I wonder like if Erica or Josie, you know, did they send it the provocation and did they send other things that day or did they um, just allow time for the students to act upon it? I, it's Erica, um, yeah. I allowed time. So I post, I usually post my things on Mondays and Tuesdays. So mm -hmm. for that video, I, that was my math. And mm -hmm. um, I believe that I posted that last week and I posted a, um, a read aloud by me and that's it yeah just for the monday and tuesday and then later on in the week i i would have maybe done something else but for the math they had to bring something back to me so i had to give them time yeah and i can see that yours too especially if they might go on a walk in the morning and see something and then like you know the all of a sudden the amazon box arrives and like oh more numbers like you know things can develop through the day or we're baking later on. Or, exactly. Yeah. You know, that kind of thing. So it might need some time um, to go with that. And Josie, it looked like your kids created some responses there too. So, you yeah. know, time. I'm not hearing you, Josie. I heard you say yes, but. Gave them lots of time to to look at it and and respond on their time. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, lots of time. I think we have lots of questions coming back to all of our team members from all across the divisions. Questions about pace, like teachers are concerned about pace, families are concerned about pace. You know how much load we're putting on families, all of that. So it is something to consider, right? Like you know, is this the one thing that you send that day? You know your audience well. 
um, you know, your students well? Is this something that they need? And like, if you think about where they are as learners, do they need time to process that? Um, can they go deeper if we give them time? I think, um, Pam, if we keep kind of moving along with this, we talked about the engagement and somehow, I, mm -hmm. in my mind, I'm wondering, we talk about this idea as parents and being the partners in the learning right now, and it is the parents who we are depending a lot on because the, mm -hmm. you know, kinders aren't necessarily as independent uh, as, you know, the older grades. So engaging the parents in this process too, and I feel that if we were to chunk these activities and send for example, just to kind of get the conversation started. Mm -hmm. And then maybe later on that day or even the next day, add like the next to it. I'm mm -hmm. wondering if it would kind of ease the, right. the stress just, maybe on I'm the- I'm just gonna skip a couple of slides here. We'll come back to those. But like you had this wondering earlier is like like the person that just asked that how much do i ask so if we go back to that the thoughts about the your provocation that you had about the letter g mm -hmm. originally did that video look like that so originally when i did this video i threw all of it together so i went through the you know all of the g words and then my if you guessed the letter G, you were right. So I wasn't giving them time to even think about it. I was just kind of like giving them an answer. And then I was giving them a challenge. Bird hunt and, or a sound hunt and find sounds in your um, house. So. Yeah, so you cut out a little bit there. So I'll just reiterate if that's okay. So oh, yeah. originally you, when you did the sound video, it was long and you had the provocation gave an answer and then said, go do this on your own. And yes. it, was, it was a lot. So, so yeah. with some reflection with, with Sean, like you talked and he said, keep the first part, keep it simple, provocation, give kids time to go do that and explore and then give the second video. And that's what somebody in the chat was just asking, like, what do you do? So this could come later in the day, come the next day, you know, your learner. So, so, whoop. I don't know why my mouse doesn't want to pick up that. So here's this part two. Can you guess which sound I was searching for today? If you guess the letter G, you were right. G makes the G sound. I made some labels with the letter G so that I could put them on the items that I have found. Gun starts with G. Green starts with G. Go on a sound hunt around your house. Send us some pictures or a video and see if we can guess the sound you were searching for. Good luck. Can't wait to see. Hmm. So one video provocation and second video like a demonstration. You're encouraging kids to actually engage in this and demonstrate a few things. Yeah, and then so and then send them sending them away with something independent to do. And my thought with the whole engagement piece is when maybe you start to receive back those um, sound searches that the students have sent back to you, maybe then you can reach out to the family and say, "Hey, I really like what they've done. Um, can I share this with the class?" And maybe we use the student responses then to to be a prop for the rest of the class and say mm -hmm. check out what you know Sally did here what letter do you think she was searching for and just kind of keep that going mm -hmm. they're excited to see their own work and they're going to be excited to see you know what classmates have to do right. I think slowing down and going deeper is a good lesson for all of us so thank for you for sure. that thought um, I'm just going to go back a couple of slides so re-engage like the idea of the parents and letting engaging in the learning like that is one of the you know pillars of the kindergarten program and what we all know about how important naming the learning is and we go back to having a conversation with our colleague she was like she was asking us like what's this loose parts like what you know what's the deal with all of this and she was like i want my kid to do it but like really why like what is it and that kind of made us be a little bit reflective and go 
Right, in the classroom, educator teams, you are walking around noticing and naming the learning all the time for kids. And you know what prompt to drop in there at, right at that right time for that kid to push their thinking. So, you know, that video, we wondered then, well, how might we take something we already have and tweak it so we, or edit it, so we invite parents really as a partner in the learning. So Erica, um, sorry, uh, Alicia did a couple of different versions here. So I'm just mindful of our time. So we realized in clips, we can duplicate a video really easily. <laughs> Let's start with that, right? <laughs> so it wasn't, uh, we're not throwing out the bath water. We're start, we're, we've got a video product. So what we looked at, so we kind of went at it with two ways. So how can we engage and support parents to, as partners in the learning, what we might add, and then and supporting learners where they are, so how this goes. So Alicia, just which one should we look at first, do you think? Um, we... Let's look at the one on the right of the screen. Okay, this one here? Okay. Yeah, so I think my goal was just to kind of give some prompts that the parents can use when they're doing the activity with their students. Um, and also at the very beginning to kind of find it, like what is the key understanding? Why are they losing, using loose parts? What's the point of it and what's the purpose? So that's kind of how I thought about it. Okay, so let's, whoops, me, my fast clicking. Goodness gracious, I should not use my keypad, use my mouse. Today I woke up feeling a little down. I looked outside and the sun wasn't shining. The birds were chirping, but it seemed a bit dreary. I got out some loose parts and decided to create a picture. I picked some dandelions to make the sun and got some beads to resemble some green grass. I added a picnic table and some clouds, even some flowers and butterflies. Here's my beautiful spring picture. I can't wait until we have warmer weather, but for today, I'll just enjoy what I've created. How are you feeling today? I'd love to see you create something using loose parts from around your home. So what next? You can talk about feelings and strategies when you're feeling that way. You can also talk about beginning sounds, you can write a sentence, or you can use the loose parts to sort and to create patterns. So using some of those text features, you've you know, made this a little bit more, um, there's an extension to it and invited the parents into that conversation. And again, I think you know your parents just like you know your students. And some parents you know are going to be very keen and eager to kind of extend this activity. And they might want to look at some of those extension ideas, whereas some parents are going to maybe do the activity and then maybe say, like, how did it make you feel? And then that's the end of it. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of knowing know what your parents need just like you know what your learners need. Right. And like, this is just our supposition, this is our wondering, our, our idea, yeah. like, how can we help with that engagement piece? Because, um, you know, that's really what we want to make sure we're keeping that connection alive and supporting learners and just, you know, with Josie was saying that kids were asking questions about the pictures of the ducks and or the goslings. And then, you know, Erica saying like people had to want to get up and get going at the, at the, um, Make, look at numbers like it's just that invitation to show that this is important um, in their learning and how can we keep the learning going you notice too in the chat um, there's a few people like Diana you're saying and I don't know if you want to um, hop on mic but just saying that you're constantly revising so I don't know, don't know if you're getting lots of feedback from parents and what that looks like um, I think it's really valuable to keep on contact with the with the families. So we either like text them or send out um, a message on Seesaw just to kind of see where families are at. If they're overwhelmed, mm -hmm. what activities they're enjoying. Um, I find these Zoom sessions are really valuable to constantly be sort of like tweaking and reevaluating what kind of activities we're putting out and mm -hmm. seeing what kind of response. Um, I was really uh inspired by nicole hooper last week saying how she was really 
nervous about putting herself on video and then she did um and i really tried to incorporate that this week and i was really surprised at some of the responses um that it, it, that parents really kind of enjoy that parents, uh, the children really, parents responded that the kids really enjoyed that. Um, so same thing too, I was nervous about putting that out there and um, you kind of start to create an, a very intimate bond with your, with your families. So having that feedback has been valuable. So constantly trying to reevaluate what we're putting out. Oh, so lovely to hear, so great. And it's true. It's kind of, it's a constant thing that we're hearing throughout all of the kind of panels that engagement is down a little bit. Parents are getting tired. I know I'm getting tired. Teachers are getting tired. Kids are getting tired. Yeah. Um, so, you know, just kind of tweaking things a little bit and maybe trying to just change it up a little bit. Maybe. And simple, keeping it simple and thinking about what might work. We don't have the answers, but. Um, I just love the idea that the video brings things to life a little bit more. It's like taking activities off the page. It's so Diane, like your emotional responses that you're getting from families, like it's the medium of video might be helping you. So we just want to uh, summarize with just some of those videos that we saw today. So this is a lot of this can happen in Seesaw Video too, Adobe Spark, Shadow Puppet. Um, Keynote and slides can kind of run as a as a video option too but like let's go keep it simple like just use your little video and voice over the top like start with that might be a place where people are and you know sometimes that's the best answer keeping it simple um we will share these out too but this is a one of the other videos that was created from our elementary program team um they did an adobe spark on how to do read alouds using adobe spark but when I first watched it, I was thinking about like read alouds, but then after we started talking about propagation videos, I started looking at the technical support <laughs> that went along in that. And we'll share this out too, but Apple Clips, I just Google that and in YouTube and just like it's a three minute video on Apple Clips, but we'll make sure we share that out because I'm being mindful of the time. It's top of the hour. And uh, so today we really focused on that provocation video and like when Alicia and I, Karen and Heather were talking at, you know, what's going to be happening for next week, um, videos, our team, we, we were having a big conversation about it. And we felt that kindergarten educators, we want to honor the work that you're already doing, like you're doing the provocation. So it's about how do we leverage that, that skill set that you already have and how might you learn a little bit about videos to, um, uh, communicate with your families but there are way more other kinds of videos so you might hear the word micro video happening from um, our colleagues in the grades one to eight because they're focusing on that but there's many and the demonstration video so things to think and learn about always but lastly thank you so much for the sharing from our contributors today um, Erica thank you for sharing this on the math lens and Josie on the uh, on the literacy side, Alicia, she was like the video queen this week, <laughs> making all kinds of stuff. And thank you to um, Heather and Karen, our reflective partners, and all of you in the chat. So any last words from the chat that we should address? I'm gonna give a PSA. So mm -hmm. we would love to hear other voices than just mine on videos. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so please, if you have anything to share, reach out. We would love to see what you guys are doing in your rooms. Um, so please yeah. do not hesitate. We also have that Google form for feedback. What would you like to see um, in upcoming sessions? So I don't know, Pam, if we can quickly put up that link. Yeah. I'll then... see if I can find that. Oh, come back. I have to... We don't throw anything out here. So let me second. <laughs> there we go. Well, you're looking at... Oh. Pam, I was just going to say, and Alicia, we just had questions, um, and we sort of talked about like how many activities people are posting every day, two to three, kind of just whatever works, I think, for, and there's lots of awesome ideas in the chat, so save the chat to everybody, and then you can read it, but um, mm -hmm. yeah, two to three a day, maybe a math, a language, and an optional one, a um, few activities at the beginning of the week, and then they can work through them at their own pace, which is an awesome idea, too. Mm -hmm. um, and telling, maybe telling the parents that like, Hey, you just, I'm not giving it to you all at one time to do it all today, but kind of spread yeah. it out over the week. So lots of awesome ideas in the chat too. Awesome. Great. Thank you. So we can download that. And, uh, these sessions can be found too on YouTube. Rod has been saving them for us. So maybe he could pipe out and share with that with us. 
how we can find our sessions on YouTube because I yeah. also, I learned about. <laughs> They're all on one link. It's a simple okay. link. I'll, I'll find it and share it with you so you can okay. remember. So you can see all the sessions that you might have missed. That's great. So we'll share that out. So any last words from the crew here today? Thanks for coming. Mm -hmm. Enjoy the sunshine. It's summer. It's summer next week, guys. So <laughs> last, this week was winter and next week <laughs> is supposed to be summer. So yeah. How's it, would there say, yeah, it may rain, it may snow, it may be sunny. <laughs> it's May. <laughs> Good job, Heather. Manage in the chat, keeping us focused, filtering oh, through things. No <laughs> My first time. Oh, someone's being punny. Thanks for provoking me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh. I like that. <laughs> That's Jeff Laidlaw. Thank you, Jeff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> funny. Awesome. And like that honest sharing about how the pace of the week, that's so important for us to hear and reflect on and make decision what's best for our own learners. So oh, great. <laughs> Thanks again, Rod. We appreciate you. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm happy to be here. That was, that was really cool. So, so interesting how you can take a simple, simple idea. And as soon as it's got a little bit of video and a little bit of audio to it, it sort of engages, um, folks far more interesting than just putting a line of text that says go and do something you know to mm -hmm. oh yeah share it in an engaging way mm -hmm. our kindergarten teams are wizards at that 